Wednesday, February 28th, 2024, Monaco 64, home of alternative economics and contrarian views. We're going to look at a topic today that we haven't looked for in a few months, and it's the BRICS. It was all, all the rage last summer when they had their summit in August. People were speculating whether they're going to announce some kind of uh, gold-backed currency. Uh, of course, it's still too early for that, but they're continuing to accumulate gold. And uh, what we're going to look at today is how Janet Yellen, the Secretary of the U.S. Treasury, sounded the death knell for the dollar, or if you want to call it the petrodollar. And it's strange because I, it's not only me who says this, but uh, a lot of people think that uh, the dollar is collapsing from within. <laughs> Even uh, President Putin in his recent interview with Tucker Carlson said that, why are you doing this? <laughs> he, he, he said, we used to use the dollar before you started sanctioning us. So uh, that's what we're going to look at today uh, briefly. Uh, before I do... Uh, or before we start looking into the in this topic, I like to uh, thank you again. We're getting towards the end of the month. Yes, we've got another day uh, in February this year. But uh, yeah, thank you again for your interest in the channel, uh, for all your support, and for those of you who have have just uh, learned about my channel and enjoy my content. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure um, you hit the little notification bell to be notified of all my new videos. I, I make a video every day, virtually. And uh, yeah, thanks again. So before we move further, just want to talk as well about a couple of playlists that I have. Uh, one of them is the Bretton Woods system. And this is really important in understanding what the dollar today is all about. So I have about, well, I have 13 videos in, in that uh, file. Let me see. Uh, I started uh, posting on the, on the topic six years ago. Um, yeah, and it explains to you uh, the system that we are under up until... August 15th, 1971, when uh, President Nixon temporarily suspended the convertibility, uh, the fixed convertibility of the dollar uh, at $35 uh, per troy ounce of gold. That was, I would say, the most important monetary event. Well, <laughs> Uh, of the, the 20th century, if not the last few hundred years. And it's had a huge impact on us, uh, well, the whole world. And uh, learning about the Bretton Woods system will show you that uh, all the other currencies out there uh, that we have now are all just as bad as the dollar, if not worse, because the dollar is the head of the... Uh, the snake, so to speak. And uh, I wouldn't get distracted either about the strength of the dollar against all the other fiat currencies. What you need to look at in terms of the strength of the dollar and the whole system that we have now, which will switch now to the petrodollar system, is uh, the price of gold and silver. So the higher gold and silver go, the more in peril this system is, uh, the, the more the currencies, the fiat currencies are collapsing. So what about the petrodollar files? Well, that was the system that was um, informally uh, created by the Americans uh, through, through then uh, Secretary of State Henry Kissinger and the Saudis. And that's why it's called the petrodollar files. All, all this did uh, was create um, demand for the 
Well, what John Exter, who worked for the New York Fed in the 50s and 60s, said, uh, it created demand for the I owe you nothings uh, dollar and other fiat currencies for that matter, uh, because the dollar became, of course, uh, backed by nothing after 1971. And I saw that the president of uh, El Salvador recently said, uh, he was right about uh, what he said there, that uh, the dollar is backed by thin air <laughs> because it's the, uh, the Fed that buys most of the treasuries. Do I agree with him on what should be the monetary reserve for countries if they want to have something like that? <laughs> Uh, not necessarily, but he was right about that. And I'll stop at that. And uh, yeah, my petrodollar uh, files has 55 videos. And I, I started talking about the end of the petrodollar six years ago. So you can see here, end of petrodollar supremacy will mean reemergence of gold. Gold was probably languishing around 1200, 1300 back then. Uh, it's still very undervalued and so is silver of course and what that means is that the fiat currencies are overvalued that's all it means um and uh but that will lend in my opinion uh it's just not uh sustainable the system because it's a debt-based system and if you watch some of my Bretton woods and my petrodollar file videos you will see why and china of course has been at the forefront of this move away from the petrodollar. Yes, it's partly because they want to be uh, the major economic power. If they're not already, does it mean that they, I think they want to conquer the world? No, I don't think so. But I know a lot of you think they do. I think the major reason they, they've uh, started, uh, well, they started six years ago, and I, I've made a, a series of videos there. China delivers knockout blow to petrodollar part one, two, and three. And these are some of my best videos. The reason they're doing it because uh, they've been accumulating a, a lot of uh, treasuries, uh, which is a way of holding dollars. And uh, they learned uh, the lesson <laughs> from 2008 um, they had a lot of mortgage-backed securities and treasuries and the system almost collapsed and they had to come in and help with the bailout as well, the Chinese. Did you know that? And uh, they saw there and then that the system was fragile, that uh, uh, they needed to slowly build the infrastructure with other countries like Russia, the BRICS, and we're going to come to the BRICS in a minute, in order to protect all that uh, <laughs> they've done economically over the last 35 years, uh, becoming f coming from a dirt poor country to bringing hundreds of millions out of poverty. And I'm not judging politics here. I'm just talking about the facts. So they knew that they had to have a, an alternative. And I said, uh, <laughs> and you can listen to my videos um, in the playlist that it wouldn't be something that happens overnight because the dollar or the petrodollar <laughs> uh, was like a super tanker, right? A super tanker is actually um, the ship uh, in which they carry uh, petroleum or crude oil, which is uh, interesting. But super tankers are huge and um, I think they, you can have super tankers 50,000, 100,000 metric tons. Uh, and they take uh, a long time to change tack. And uh, they're not like a Boston Whaler dinger where you can just, you know, whiz around. It takes time. And I said it would take time because they needed to build support as well uh, with other countries because the Chinese knew that if you go at it alone, there's a very good chance that America will be able to stop you, just like they did with Saddam Hussein, with Muammar Gaddafi, who wanted to have a gold-backed dinar for the whole of Africa. Look what happened to him, right? <laughs> we came, uh, we saw, he died. Well, that's what Secretary of State Hillary Clinton said of what happened in Libya. When 
a NATO, the defensive alliance, right, <laughs> uh, um, invaded that country. So, and I said as well that the dollar is collapsing from within. And it is because the Chinese started looking into diversification <laughs> after the collapse of 08. Who created that collapse of 08? Well, the U.S. financial system, Wall Street, the Federal Reserve, it's from within. And now um, we get this comment from the Secretary of the U.S. Treasury, and I, I thank Peter Sp Spinner from GoldSeek for tweeting or posting this. And he says, the weaponized dollar. Yellen urges world leaders to unlock frozen, soon to be stolen, he says, Russian central bank assets, $300 billion, and send them to Ukraine so they can pay back their loans to the military industrial complex and their puppets in DC. Well, we know as well that the United States has been abusing uh, the privilege uh, of the dollar through sanctions and other uh, measures to punish uh, countries and regimes that don't play ball with them. It's like uh, the United States uh, has gone from providing a tool for commerce and trade amongst nations to using it as a weapon. And that's another reason people, other nations are looking uh, for an alternative and does it mean that these nations are going to be better off with this new alternative BRICS or whatever you want to call it? Not necessarily, but at least they're not going to be under the thumb of one of a bully, so to speak. It's like Nigel Farage. His account with Coots Bank was closed. Well, he moved his money. He went to another bank. Why would he keep his money with Coots, if Coots wants to bully him. It's the same thing with the dollar. Why keep uh, your reserves in that system, right? So, and this applies not to just nations, it applies to very wealthy individuals who keep, who are not, let's say, necessarily American and keep a lot of wealth in dollars. It just, <laughs> it doesn't have to be in the US, it can be in dollars offshore. You are uh, in danger of losing uh, your funds. It's not just for countries, and I think people are waking up to that. And then we get this as well from Gold Telegraph yesterday. He posted or tweeted, according to a South African envoy, 25 countries are currently on the waiting list to join BRICS. And the uh, Interesting thing about BRICS is that a lot of the countries that are in BRICS and are joining BRICS have a lot of natural resources, which is something that uh, the United States does have. But for some reason, um, the American political class has been maybe saving all those resources for later. Uh, we know, for the last 50 years or so, we know there's a lot of oil in Alaska, but it's not uh, exploited. Uh, we've seen what President Biden has done to um, oil production and everything, but uh, be as it may, it's going to take a long time for the United States and its allies, especially Europe, that doesn't have any resources to basically um, adjust to that. And what this death knell that Janet Yellen sounded yesterday will do. It, it means that more and more countries, more and more nations will require less dollars. <laughs> uh, we've seen that Russia's done well during this uh, war of these last two years because it's got a lot of support from other countries around the world. And it's <laughs> the only really real thing that America uh, is and, and the West has been exporting massively, the US and the UK, for example, are arms and debt. So they can get those from elsewhere. They, and they don't need debt. And that's why they've been buying gold as well, because if you're not going to use uh, dollars as reserves, 
you're going to have to use gold <laughs> because gold is the ultimate store of value. It's the ultimate monetary asset that backs currencies. And you only have to go back uh, just over 100 years uh, and uh, listen to what J.P. Morgan or John Pierpont Morgan, the J.P. Morgan, said when asked what gold was at the Peugeot hearings in, in Congress in 1913. And, and he replied, um, gold is money. Everything else is credit. So how can you back a, a currency with credit? <laughs> and that's why uh, the current system is uh, not fit for purpose. Yes, it has lasted long, long, but it won't last forever because it's a lie. It's a fraud. <laughs> uh, it's like, uh, yeah, how can you back credit with credit? It doesn't make sense. You have to be able to extinguish that credit. Um, so what's the consequence of this situation? And uh, the problem with this situation is that many people uh, in the mainstream, mostly in the mainstream economics world, central banking, political world, in the West, either they have been asleep about what's happening to the dollar and its consequences, or they don't want you to know. <laughs> it's only uh, guys like me, um, in the alternative who have been warning for about eight years that this was going to happen. Consequence will be we're already feeling it is the collapse of our economies, uh, collapsing purchasing power of our currencies, which they call inflation. Um, yeah, that's the consequence and it's not going to get better. But in life, <laughs> there are always cycles and it will get better eventually, but in the meantime, uh, it's it, it's going to get worse. And when will it happen? I, I don't know. Uh, maybe when the uh, BRICS make some kind of, kind of official announcement, who knows? But um, the United States definitely is pushing for <laughs> maybe uh, they're doing it. Uh, on purpose, or maybe Janet Yellen is just uh, incompetent, and I, I think she she is. Uh, they're pushing other countries out of the dollar, especially with what uh, she just said yesterday. You know that they're gonna probably steal Russia's reserves. I, I mean, can you imagine back in '03 when uh, the U.S. and the U.K. illegally invaded Iraq? If other countries uh, said, uh, let's say France, oh, we're going to confiscate all U.S. assets in France because America invaded Iraq illegally. Well, that didn't happen. <laughs> and that's what's happening now vis-a-vis uh, -vis Russia. So let's quickly look at the markets this morning then. It's uh, 8.18 a.m. London time. We got spot gold. It's uh, kind of stuck around 2030. We're at 2029 right now, down a dollar. High has been 34, low 27.50. So what about silver? All silver is still under pressure. It's down 10 cents at 22.35. <laughs> it just gives us another uh, more opportunity to keep uh, moving away from the fall, you know, the collapsing dollar, pound, euro, uh, all the fiat currencies, right? Uh, what about the stock market? Well, the Dow futures is down 60. The NASDAQ is down 44. S&P is down 7. Uh, to the currencies, uh, the pound is down about a third of a percent, actually, 126.40. Uh, the euro is down about a quarter at 108.15. The dollar is up uh, about 0.2 versus the yen at 150.75. And the dollar uh, U1 is pretty steady at 721. And the dollar is uh, moving up quite uh, strongly still against the Swiss franc. It's at 88.10. I remember we got down to 83 uh, towards the end of last year. So, and as I've said before, fiat currencies, they're all sinking and they, they take turn, 
turns to sink faster uh, against each other. Don't be fooled by the uh, so-called dollar strength. Uh, the other uh, currency, Aussie dollar, is down two-thirds of a percent, just above 65. Uh, the dollar is up a third versus the Canadian dollar, 135.70. And the Kiwi dollar is down over 1% at 61.01. So the uh, dollar is uh, pretty strong this morning. Uh, WTI crude, uh, that's down two-thirds as well, 78.15. And Brent, uh, the same, it's at 82.08. Uh, platinum. That's down 10 bucks, trading at 880. And high grade copper is down three quarters of a percent at 382. Let's quickly look at the uh, US Treasury market. The 10 year yield is uh, down two basis points, just below 430. And, and one more thing I wanted to say is that uh, the FDIC should be coming out with its banking quarterly profile report either today or tomorrow for the fourth quarter. And that's going to be something interesting to look at. I'm keeping an eye on their website. They don't have a fixed date uh, in which they publish this, but it will be before March 1st, I think. So there you go. Uh, with that, I'm going to wish you all a very good day. Take care. Bye.